Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, I'm Alex and this is the Ramble and we go until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Pill free. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Larry, for being with us and we'll see you again next week. We'll no see way. You soon. <laughs> Uh, and I was telling uh, Larry during the, the break between the two that we were doing today that um, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I have all these pills I take, and I'm, I'm taking doxycycline now for an infection, and it, it made, yesterday I couldn't stand up straight, <laughs> and today it's got a whole bunch of other little side effects like nausea and memory loss, and and I, 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 I told you that I'm sick of all the pills I take. You know, I'm just thinking maybe I should just stop them. And if I drop dead because I'm not taking these pills, so be it. I'm 83. Okay, goodbye. Adios. Uh, I know some people are taking 15 pills a day. I'm taking, well, I'm, I'm taking six now. Was taking seven. But I'm taking six pills now. And I'm going, what? You know, I got one for the blood pressure, and I got one for the cholesterol, and I got one for the this and for the that. And uh, and I go, you know, why don't I just stop them all? You know? I mean, it, it, is it going to be that profound an effect on me if I stop them? Well, there was a huge study that came out about statins, that you're taking that for your cholesterol, that... Uh enormous study they did I think in Australia that said if you take a statin you will probably live four days longer oh really yeah oh really well you know I what I read about the statins also they cause other things to happen uh, is, uh, they can uh, cause liver problems and muscle aches yeah and muscle aches but there was one other thing and I, I was you know um, lightheadedness, all kinds of things. But I, I was reading it and going, what am I taking this for? You know? I mean, yeah, it helps, but it th there are other effects that it has on other parts of your body. I wish I could remember what the thing was I read, but I'm as I say, one of these pills is making it hard for me to remember stuff today. So, be a, maybe, maybe the statins do that. I think they might have some brain fog. It, I think they, it does have brain fog, and it um, there was something else that it did that I, uh, that it that I that I there were I was having effects of like that. I'm going, what do I need statins for? You know, but you they, don't have a history of heart disease in your family. Well, it, no, but you know what happened with with statins? They were a great invention, especially for people who had you know potential heart problems. Uh, statins completely lower the cholesterol, but there are a bunch of things it does, and I'm trying to remember now. And uh, I, I, in fact, I was looking at uh, what was what was I looking it up for? I, w I was looking up something, and I noticed that something like three pills that I'm taking affect you negatively. You know, uh, I. I uh, I, I wish I could remember what the thing was. I'll remember before this is over with. Maybe it's memory loss. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's memory loss. Yeah, no, it could be because I can't remember what it was. What it was. Um, but uh, it, it, it just, I saw this list of stuff that these things cause, and I'm going, well, wait a minute, how's that making my life better? You know, memory loss. Oh, good. Yeah, it's making my life better because it causes memory loss. And you go, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. So, anyway, as you get older, doctors give you more and more pills. And the reason they do is they figure, hey, I ain't going to live that long, so why not give it? You want heroin? Here, have some heroin. That'll take care of the problem. 
That would be better. Like, I've, be thought more about, fun. I've, I've thought about heroin uh, because here I am, 83. I may as well have some fun in my later life, huh? Well, does uh, hair, <laughs> heroin doesn't, they don't seem like, heroin addicts live a long time, a lot of them, don't they? You know what they don't do? They don't fall down. You ever notice <laughs> that? <laughs> standing, you ever see one standing on a street corner and he's going and he, he looks like he's going to hit the ground and just before he's about ready to start hitting right. the ground, boom, he pops right back up. That's a good point. Yeah, you don't fall down if you use heroin. That's one of the lessons I've learned. Someone said drug addicts. They always seem like they have a great head of hair, too, for some reason. Yes, yes. Alcoholics always seem to have a good head of hair. Do you ever notice that? Yeah, yeah that's true, yeah. Yeah. And they have the, cl- they have the clearest arteries. How, how do you feel about working in a profession where you ply your trade in institutions that peddle drugs in the form of alcohol. Yeah, someone said comics where our job is to sell drinks. Yeah, but isn't that, aren't they pushing drugs? I mean, alcohol, I think, if if somebody said to me, shall I do heroin or alcohol, I'd say do the heroin in a second, you know. If you don't, I think alcohol by far is the biggest, the most negative problem of any of any drug on society. I had a friend of mine die recently because uh, of his constant drinking over the years. You know, Uh, and um, you know, I mean, cirrhosis of the liver is a very common form of death in this country. And, and, you know, people who ha- are alcoholics have a very hard time quitting. It's just, it's just, it's horrible. It's just terrible. And they often makes people violent and... Obnoxious. Obnoxious <laughs> and uh, all the, uh, how many deaths from cars by drunk drivers. And... I've always hated dr- people who are drunk. I can't stand yeah. it. You don't drink, it do you? Can't be, no, can't be around that shit. Yeah. I, but you say you can't be around it, and yet you're working around it. Yeah, in fact, the other night, some guy came up to me after the show, and he was so drunk, it was just, it was scary. And, and their job while they're there is to get them drunk. Mm-hmm. And, and now here's old Larry, and you're, <laughs> you're helping the pusher, you know? So I'm like, a, I'm like a, <laughs> an assistant drug dealer. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, because alcohol is that technically a drug? Alcohol, yeah, of course, of course, it's a drug. We don't call it that because we have made it our legal uh, institution. You know, it's it's a legal um, medication, shall we say? But Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, I read a book, I read a very thick book, and I, I I don't read books that often, but I love this book. And then they did a, a documentary series out of it that Ken Burns did called Prohibition. And it was all about Prohibition. And after I finished this book and I went, you know, everybody vilifies Prohibition as being terrible. But really, the, what happened as a result of it was good. Prior to Prohibition, you have to understand the atmosphere into which alcohol was made illegal. There were at least three institutions on every street where you could walk in and buy beer. Okay? Or, sometimes, grain alcohol. And husbands would spend all their money on beer and booze and come home drunk and beat their wives. I think I saw that, yeah, yeah. And this wasn't uncommon. This is pretty much common. And the people who basically pushed prohibition more than any was the Women's Christian Temperance Union, WCTU, because women were sick and tired of having their husbands lose all their money to booze and then to come home and beat the crap out of them while they were drunk. Yeah. So under those circumstances, you almost have to say, yeah, the idea of making alcohol illegal is not the worst idea in the world. Uh, it it passed um, 
primarily, it passed, by the way, almost at the same time that women got the right to vote. The, the two were intertwined with each other. And um, the prohibition, I think, lasted 12 years, something like that. And then they finally did away with it. Well, on the other side, when they did away with it, alcoholism wasn't as bad in this country and never got as bad as it was prior to prohibition. So if anything good came out of prohibition, it was that it, it completely changed the way in which people used liquor and placed it in our society. Does that make sense? Yeah. And uh, as bad as prohibition was, like you said, it was the, the misery of alcoholism. These husbands either beating their wives or just passed out all night in a bar. Or just being obnoxious, which is the part yeah. that bothers me a lot. You know, but I mean, I, I, they, they were, um, it was just horrible in this country. People at homes, in their homes, outside their door would have a barrel with hard cider in it. God, I, and there, was, there were three and, and, bars in and, every block. And, and before you came in, you were invited to take some of the hard cider. So, I mean, alcohol was so prevalent in this society. And um, uh, so, uh, consequently, I think that prohibition, even though it was a very bad idea, because it makes something that people love and make it illegal, they could have maybe slowed it down another way. But to do it the, in the way they did it was perhaps not the most practical way. Well, I think the original prohibition law was to uh, not ban it completely, but cut it way back, which probably would have been a lot better. Yeah, but no, they just cut it out completely. They cut it out, and that uh, which led to organized crime. Which or, uh, led to people going into speakeasies and breaking the law themselves in order to have their alcohol. So when you suddenly create a situation in which uh, most Americans on one level or another become criminals, uh, you, it's not good. It's just not good. And it's isn't, that, isn't that how Joe Kennedy made a lot of money? That's how he made his money. Uh, it was Irish, uh, what was it, Irish whiskey, I think, that he was importing, you know. From, Can from Canada, right? Yeah, yeah. And they would have these boats that would pull up beyond the three-mile limit or eight-mile, whatever the limit is, and, and then you would go out there with a boat, and you would go from boat to boat, seeing who had the cheapest booze. And then they would dump it into your little boat and you'd come back to, to New York City and you'd have enough alcohol to take care of you for the year. I mean, it was, it, 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 it's, if you can get a hold of the documentary, it's on PBS. It was on PBS with Ken Burns. It's fascinating. It's fascinating the politics that went into it the Women's Christian Temperance Union, their influence on it. Um, but I, I just think they had the right idea. They just had the wrong implementation of it. Yeah. And it was never going to survive implemented that way. But it was made into a constitutional amendment, which meant that they had to go and do the reverse to pass a law negating prohibition. So they had to go through the whole process again, getting you know a certain percentage of the states to go along with it, and then voting on it, and then doing this and that. The process takes just as long to undo it than to do it. And we yeah. still have prohibition as an amendment. But we have an amendment, uh, two amendments later, or amendment later, something like that, that negates it. So it's in fact, it's the only amendment that uh, is there and then gets undone by another amendment after it. So anyway, you know, but I, don't, I, I always felt that alcohol, it bothered me a great deal. Uh, and my father was a musician, so he drank. But he could hold his liquor. The day he couldn't hold his liquor any longer, he stopped drinking. So, you know, uh, but I, I just, I, I never drank. Never drank. You Me either. Yeah, you, you neither. And and people, did you get the same thing I would get when you go to a party or something and, and you wouldn't drink and they'd think you were an alcoholic? They either think you're an alcoholic or they get mad because they, oh, you're too good to drink or something like that. Yeah. Same, same thing with pot. 
Well, yeah, I, I don't know. Well, I don't know if it was as bad with pot because pot was illegal, and so therefore, I think people felt, well, it was your choice whether whether you wanted to break the law or not. Yeah. But you know, with booze, man, every, uh, one time, you know, when I was at, uh, remember the, uh, uh, the Quake. Mm-hmm. Well, when I finally left them or was in the process of leaving them, they wanted to try and get out of their contract. So um, we, I got my lawyers, you know, again, we're talking lawyers, and they held a meeting. And at this meeting, one of the lawyers from the other side, or not the lawyer, maybe one of the people who owned the, had bought the radio station, uh, said, well, you know, I hear Alex Bennett is an alcoholic. And where that came from was, people never saw me drink at parties. Wow. And they automatically, if you didn't drink, they assumed you were an alcoholic and that you were trying to quit and whatever. And said, I hear Alex Bennett's an alcoholic. That's the minute they had to pay us every penny they owed us. Because what that's called is secondary defamation. And what it is when you say, well, I hear that, okay, it's secondary defamation. It's just as bad as regular defamation. Really? Okay. So they, they finally, they had to cave. You know, so they so said, you okay, we'll you keep... You could have gotten we'll, a lot out of them? No, they had to keep paying me, whether I worked or not. Uh, oh, okay. And then somebody came along and said, listen, I'll make a deal with you. We'll pay half of his salary if you'll just let us have him on our station. And that was Live 105. So, mm-hmm. so, so are you going to the big Live 105 party this weekend? Uh, I don't think so. Did you know about it? Someone told me there was going to be some reunion or something. I yeah, don't even know what yeah. it is. I never heard about it. Yeah, ne- really? Never got a hold of me. No. Wow. Well, never a never rude. got a hold of me. Lori Thompson is going out, and she, she told me all about it, and she said, oh, well, do you, 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 are you going to you want to go? And I went, nah, you know, it's a little too late for me to... Plus, I have to find the exit to New York City. And... That's very difficult. <laughs> Plus, you know, I'll tell you the trouble between San Francisco and New York. I like New York better. You know why? We have better homeless here. <laughs> a better better class of homeless here. They're immigrants from another country looking for the for for the, to live in the free world, as it were. And and yours are just a bunch of uh, drug heads and mental patients who need a well, hospital real yeah. fast. You know. But anyway, no. So I'm not. I'm not going. Then I'm supposed to. Lori said, "Well, you could always record a little something for them to run at the party." And I went. Eh, I don't know. I was going to, and then I decided not to. Because my feeling is, you can't invite me. <laughs> you know how big were we at that radio station in the history you of that were, radio? You were station? the station. <laughs> it, in the history of that radio station, you know. Um, I mean, I realized that after we left, it went on for another 20 years as a music station, but, um, you know, uh, to not even officially invite me to come, uh, the hell with it, you know. Yeah. I don't need it. But anyway, so, let's see, that there's that. So you're not going. Uh, probably not, no. Where is it, do you know? I don't know. Someone just told me there was a reunion. and uh, I suppose if you wanted to find out, you could. I could, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anyways, I, I just figured the hell with it. I, you know, I don't care. Probably be, I'll probably be a lot of drinking there, and they, they, they say I was an alcoholic. <laughs> well, you're not a drug user either. You don't know. No, no. You know, the, uh, I don't. I stopped using pot years ago, and just just not for any other reason than I just stopped. You know, I, I, I didn't. Uh, I I didn't like. I like don't like being high. I know that sounds strange to some people out there, but I I like to have control over myself. That know? me too. So yeah. that's. Uh... But it shows you how miserable life is <laughs> that so many people need drugs to get through it. Well, you know, the, the, there have always been drugs. You know, our indigenous tribes in this country had a series of drugs they would use. 
They were more mm-hmm. religious in nature and gave you religious visions, but nevertheless, they would get high on them, you know. And uh, I don't, you know, I just, but anyway, so I use pot now, though, because um, my good friend Buddy Love and his wife were nice enough uh, to send me from California a vape and then a certain kind of pot that makes you sleepy. So when I go to, uh, go to bed at night, I take a puff off of it. And in, in top of all the drugs I take when I go to bed every night, that one really helps me. I think it's sativa helps me to go off to La La Land. But I don't take it to get high because I'm asleep, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I think I think that's a good reason to use it. Okay. I mean, why should you take any of these pills that they've invented to put you to sleep? Okay, to make you comatose when you can just take some pot and it'll do the same thing. And it's not, I think, as corrosive to you as a lot of other things you could do. I mean, pot is relatively a harmless drug, you know. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know people whose lives have been ruined by pot, do you? No, they, they, they're kind of annoying, but... Uh they're not violent or well I, I think my father used to my father uh, was a musician <clears throat> and needless to say in those days when it was very illegal uh, it was still around him because there were a lot of musicians who did it and I remember he could tell- go to jail for it then right oh yeah in fact remember Robert Mitchum went to jail for three months for it for possession Jesus yeah uh, that's why I always liked Robert Mitchum <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, so, I mean, uh, he said that there were musicians who felt if they did pot, they played better. He said, I never heard one who did. He said they all thought they were playing They better. thought they played better. Yeah. I, and I know a lot of comics that think they write better if they are on pot. And then well, I, here, here's what I would think about pot. I mean, what is, what is the primary ability you have to have in order to do comedy? I'm asking a comedian, and he doesn't even know. But and I don't know. When I say it, you'll agree. Timing. Dang, okay. Timing is everything. Yeah. It's how you, and timing is how you say a joke and say it so that it has timing, and, and there's a rhythm to it, and there's certain yes, things like that. Yeah, and if that. you're on pot, you're going to be really slow. Uh, you're not, you're going to lose that ability. Yeah. You know, timing will just fly right out the window. And yet, I'm sure you know comics who think they're better when they're high on pot on stage. Yeah. And I bet you know they aren't. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> I mean, how good would they be without it? I think yeah, is more they, the question. They don't even know they're bombing. Well, <laughs> if it throws the main... Wouldn't you say timing is basically the main component of comedy? Yeah. Yeah. If you throw timing out the window, what have you got? nothing uh no laugh yeah so anyway listen we uh we we we, we sent a bubs a camera true to his nature he's not opened the box yet are you afraid that it will come out and jump at you and i might <laughs> and we're trying to get it so that we can eventually see his sparse yeah, apartment well, i will i will open it this week and, uh, yeah and and I'll maybe talk to you next week, and we'll get get you up and running, and see if we can maybe next time we do this, if we can actually see you for the first time. Because for the last how many years we've been doing this? Five years, eight years? Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, we have been when you are when you're on, I put up an animation of you, a picture of you, you know, and and everybody else they can see now. They can see Lori. They can see Chuck Farnham. They can see uh, you know anybody that calls me. So. Um, we want everybody to be able to see you, so they well, can. We'll see. <laughs> so they can frighten dogs and little children. Yeah, we'll see how far this goes. But I have my doubts. But well, oh no, you wouldn't believe me. It's so easy. Um, oh boy, I'm not even going to tell you how you do it. That makes it easy. But once you learn how to do it, and it's, it's like, it's like dialing a telephone. Okay. It's that simple. Um, I'm doing all the heavy lifting on this side. Okay. Okay. You know, but 
Well, we'll talk later about it. I'll open the box this week. Well, you have other people that want you to be able to. I mean, Dana Carvey would like you to do his thing. and You know, there are a whole bunch of people out there. I'm sure they say to you, do you have Zoom? <laughs> and you go, what's that? <laughs> you know? so. Well, I think, Car- I think there is a, there might be a Zoom account on the car- uh, computer Carvey sent me. Well, you might plug it in and just start it up and see what's there and we yeah. and when i call you i'll call you next week at some point and we'll yeah let's talk next week yeah anyway you know it's always good to talk to you larry whether it's visually <laughs> or just uh, with a lousy animation in back of you in either case we'll talk <laughs> yes ladies and gentlemen the famous larry bubbles brown thanks larry Bye. thanks alec all right Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, here I am, folks. Welcome. Welcome to our fine little program. Uh, well, you know, it's, it's uh, let's see here. It's, uh, it's uh, Friday night, last night of the week. We'll get this thing out of the way and then I can go to sleep, okay? Anyway... <laughs> Quite a week it's been, you know. I'm dealing with this stuff with the apartment and all of that. It just goes on and on and on and on. But uh, anyway, and then, uh, well, I will t- we'll talk about this with the people that I have waiting here. And I'm going to assume that they're all legitimate because they all look to be legitimate. They might not be, but I'm not going to turn on my camera until they turn on their camera. There they are, folks. That's our our Zoom panel. Okay. And we got uh, Jeff, and we've got uh, uh, me, and we've got Josh, and we've got uh, Brian. Hello, Brian. Hello. How you doing? Anyway, okay. so that's our, our, our uh, life is, uh, how's things going? I've been trying to solve a problem all day. Uh, because I, I, I came up with the, you know, I, I went online today and saw any number of uh, ways of preventing Zoom bombing. Uh-huh. And as I looked it up, do you know that Zoom bombing is a federal crime? Oh, wow. Yeah. It's a, a, it's a crypto crime, uh-huh. as it were. And it's against the law. And uh, you can get some time in prison for it. And, uh, yeah, I know a lot of you guys are going, well, how are they going to catch me? Well, there are ways of catching you, okay? Uh, But what I'm going to do for the time being is after about the first 15 minutes of this program, I'm going to lock everybody out so nobody else can call, okay? So that the people who are here can have some peace and quiet without happening what happened last night. Now, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to do it, and we'll see if it works. It should work okay. But if you're out there and you like calling the program, right, and you want to be part of the program, then you better do it now. Or if you're going to Zoom bomb me, do it now. Because, uh, but uh, you're never, all you're ever going to get out of me is as soon as I see some name down there and I go to it, I'm going to turn my camera on in order to make the connection. And then I will. Uh, turn it uh, to go back to the zoom the minute it's not a problem okay now i don't care who they say they are you know i'm going to so if you're, every now and then you see the camera you know uh go to me like this that's because i'm going uh to go to the uh to the to the uh, uh to uh, let somebody on okay but after the first 15 minutes I'm locking everybody out so they can't get on. All right? Uh, is good. that fair? You know, yeah. if people don't do it early enough, uh, I can, I'm just going to, you know. You had a, just, yeah, just, if you had one of your regulars that was running a little bit late, like myself or Kevin, they could just message you. you know. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they could message me and I could. And you yeah. would know, you know. Yeah. 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 And it comes up on my watch if you do it, if you do it through Facebook. Right. It uh, comes up on my watch, and I will uh, I will see it. Okay. It's not as if they'd be locked out. They could reach you if they needed. Yeah, yeah, but they don't know that because they're not listening right now. 
May is. It, you see, that's the problem. And then they write me, well, I couldn't get on last night. I didn't know what was wrong. Well, what was wrong is you didn't call in. Well, I think 15 minutes is enough time to give people a chance to, uh, you know, to do it. The uh, show's on same time every night. It's not a surprise. Yeah, not a surprise. And I always run an interview usually during the first uh, 25 minutes of the show, and then we're ready to go. No surprise. Nope. So, anyway. So, uh, uh, what's your take, uh, Josh, on the way in which Biden is handling the whole Hamas deal? Uh, well, I, I mean, I think what he's doing is, is fine and... and you know, the right thing to do. I mean, I think that uh, the U.S. is going to support, you know, the Israeli effort to eradicate Hamas after, you know, the attack. So everything that he's done so far seems to be in line with that goal. Um, they certainly seem to have pretty good agreement on that within his administration. I mean, I saw the Secretary of Defense out today, and uh, I was watching just a short time ago a little bit of that, and you know the Secretary of State is in the in the region saying the same thing. So I mean they seem pretty unanimous on it. I, I think that his handling has been pretty good. I mean he's kept the Israelis calm enough. Now look, I mean I know there's been a lot of destruction, but I mean you know. The Israelis are kind of known for overreacting sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so, in a lot of ways, what really can he do? I mean, he can't tell them, don't do that. I mean, he can, but it's not up to him. So, uh, I think I think what he's what he's working is is pretty well. I think that he's helping them with a uh, sort of building a, a coalition and 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 also cryptic messages and probably straight out messages in private, you know, asking them to please at least do it the right way and, and, to, and to try not to just, you know, bomb everything in sight, basically, um, which I don't know if they're going to listen. You know, it's, it's interesting the way, you know, Israel is reacting to it is maybe playing into Hamas's hands. And he, let, me, let me give you the, my theory why. Uh, and it, it's it's kind of um, they would like to see Gaza get decimated because what that does is that's the very thing that created the hatred against Israel over the years have been people who've been displaced uh, and like the Palestinians getting displaced and so on and kids growing up in desert camps you know who only built up a hatred for Israel uh, and I'm not saying the Jews, because I don't think we can call Israel the Jews. I know they would like to let you think that, <laughs> but hey, I'm a Jew, and where am I living? You know, I'm not there. Um, but it, uh, Hamas loves to create this chaos. I mean, there are people in Gaza right now, the majority of the people in Gaza, who are not terrorists, who didn't want ill of anybody, who are now dying and injured and everything else because of the actions of Hamas. But they don't look at it that way because what they look at are the bombs, the missiles coming at them from well, a place I, called Israel. I, I you can know? see that, but I, I don't think that, you know, I, I do think there are a lot of non-Hamas Palestinians who, who wish harm to Israel, and I think that though the people of Gaza as a whole have chosen Hamas as their government leadership to represent them. Um, I mean, Hamas is their, their chosen and their appointed, you know, government, basically. Um, so I think more by force than anything else. You no, know, so they support Hamas in many ways, and if it is by force, well then... You know, I don't think the average gotta, person in I don't think I don't think the ever average person in Gaza goes Hamas, yay. You know, mm -hmm. but Hamas know. has pretty much taken that part of the world over for themselves mm -hmm. and forced themselves upon Gaza. I mean, but this is sort of the problem 
you know, with Afghanistan's situation as well, where a lot of people would say, oh, the average Afghanistan, Afghani, you know, they don't, they don't like the Taliban, but none of them are really willing to do anything about it. That's right. That's right. So, you know, I mean... Yeah, and but that, but also, you know, I, I think, look, there are myriads of problems here. We can lay uh, some of the fault at the, at the feet of the uh, of the Israelis, who over the years have done nothing really to bring peace to that area of the world. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, it it is just a situation that has been ugly and gets uglier and uglier. And uh, I don't know. I, well, it's certainly ugly. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the they're, you know, for the Israelis, for example, militarily, I mean, their their tactical options are fairly limited. Um, yeah. You know, because of the situation, mm -hmm. uh, none of them are really going to be pretty. All of them are going to come with you know, unintended consequences and things of that nature, but they're also very limited in the fact that they probably, I mean, really, they can't have no response. I mean, I know there are going to be some people that argue that they can and they could just go on and whatever. I'm not one of those people. If people have that opinion, it's fine. I'm not a believer in it. Um, but, you know, any response that they they make measured or overreacting or whatever it's, it's still not you're still going to be able to go places and find mm -hmm. examples where folks are going to say there's a 55 year old palestinian man he was just going about his business and but you know i mean it's going to happen um yeah. and i don't know that they can avoid it any more than the americans were able to avoid killing people in similar situations when they took care of some business in Afghanistan who yeah. harbored the Taliban. Well, you know, the time. thing is, the thing is that uh -huh. I, there are two, a couple of things that we have to remember. The president was very good at this today. He mentioned that uh, he has got to find money for uh, Palestine, uh, for uh, Israel, mm -hmm. and he's got to find money for Ukraine. He brought Ukraine back into the discussion because mm -hmm. we don't want to forget what's going on in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And when you mm -hmm. want to talk about you know, if you, I think of, I was mentioning to Marjorie today. I think of Putin as the uh, Russian version of Hamas. Okay, because it's not dissimilar in what he's doing and how it's playing itself out. He's decimating entire villages. He's going in and kidnapping kids and taking them to Russia. He's um, killing old ladies. You know, it's it's the same scenario basically. Only it happens to be happening in Ukraine, and oddly enough, to a far worse extent. That's the that's the really sad part about it. Uh, it. It's sad that any of this goes on in the world. But the other thing that kind of bothered me today was uh, over at MSNBC. They were saying, "Well, you know, this is the new the new trope, as it were. Uh, this is the worst slaughter of Jews since the Holocaust." Now, you could say that, yeah. but what you're doing is diminishing the Holocaust because the Holocaust was <laughs> six million people, and this is a thousand. Yes, it's the worst since the Holocaust, but it's nothing in comparison to the Holocaust. You know? Well, no, it wasn't. I mean, this was a, you know, one off event of a quick nature, and obviously the Holocaust was not only long term. The Holocaust was systematic. Yes, very good. I mean, very good. <laughs> it was, I mean, there was a bureaucracy, quite literally, that ran it. I mean, you know, I mean, there were bureaucrats in offices that moved paperwork around for the eradication of Jews. And a whole bunch of Germans who knew nothing. <laughs> right, well, yeah. Right. <laughs> that too, yeah. Yeah. But, but I mean, know, I, yeah. don't, I don't think you can compare it to the Holocaust. I think well, you, certainly not. I think I mean, you can compare it to, oh, maybe to a lesser extent, what's going on in Ukraine. I sure. think there are a lot of other times that there have been decimations of, uh, of, of racial groups uh, that have happened, you know. But, I mean, I, 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 I agree, you know, um, which has always been my point that you can't, in my opinion, really equate, you know, Trump to the Nazis and Hitler. I mean, Trump, very bad for the country, okay? But 
it's that's comparing it's a, him to it, Hitler is uh, right. It, you know, different. and I totally could understand the counter arguments. Oh, well, that's what they said about Hitler, too. Very aware of that. Okay, several diplomas hanging on the wall. Very, very. But very just you know, then they go, well, you know, Same, but the German, know. the German people put him into office, and the yeah. German people ag agreed with what he was doing. Hey, <laughs> I'm sorry. Same thing's happening here. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. But you know, it's just. But but what I am concerned about, and what you know, uh, I think it's correct that the Ukrainian issue, the the this issue um you know some issues north korean issues that persist mm -hmm. um you know uh taiwan being you know sort of on the fence at times uh, what i would be concerned about is i'm concerned about the rise of once again of fascism and fascist or dictatorist ways mm -hmm. slowly but surely rising to the surface in multiple areas of the world at the same time mm-hmm which is mm. what led to the last world war, you know? So, yeah. um, that's what I'm concerned about. And that's why I see them as related, you know, because they're all related to a, a rise of fascist. Well, and, it's all and it, it's, totalitarian ways. It's right? all the big question you have to ask yourself. Why are we this way? Why do these things happen? Why do people do this sort of thing? Right. There's no good reason for it. No, there's not. And, you know, you could ask a priest or a rabbi, and I certainly was forced to have my fair share of uh, religious schooling when I was younger, and I've heard all the answers for all of that. I don't know that I believe any of it, you well, know, but, I well, mean... We could say, we could say, what's wrong, you know? What's wrong? What's the problem? And I'd say the problem is religion. You know, well, I yeah, mean, let's I be saying. honest I about it. Let's be yeah, certainly I'm, given a lot of answers as to why and all that. And like I said, I'm not really it, sure. I think it I, comes down to religion. This is this this is a religious war that's going. I on. think most wars are fought over religion. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I or think. I mean, uh, you know, the 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 terrorist attacks that we had here in, in the Hamas and Israeli situation is certainly uh, a war of, peop of people killing each other in the name of God, mm -hmm. which whatever being they choose to consider God. Um, but that's, you know, yeah, that's, I mean, they're certainly motivated by their uh, religious beliefs, no doubt. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, remove a religion from the equation completely. If religion, if John Lennon had his way and religion did not exist, it's possible that these so-called Palestinians and Israelis would all be watching a soccer game together tonight. Well, also, I mean, these are people who have <laughs> a who have a, um, uh, a, a a a firm belief in something that's not true. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and then they kill people over it. And it's not true. I got to tell you, you know, all that is true in any of these religions is the fact that some kind of moral precepts that they create are pretty good. You know, don't hurt anybody. Don't do this. Don't do that. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt, you know, thou shalt do this and that. Those things. But the thing is, it's those same. Um, um, what do you call it, the same feelings about morality that somehow they then pervert into what's going on now, you know, as an example. Uh, and I, I, don't, I just, you know, I just, I'm so fed up with religion, okay, and the problems that it has caused us in this world, and it continues to cause us. And we might go into another uh, world conflict because of religious wars going on. There's a moth in here. What is that? <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, you're not. I can't hardly argue with that. I mean, you know, uh, it's a uh, it's a legitimate point. I mean, that's what really the root cause of the problem, you know, is. I mean, you know, I it's you know what is this particular land that is disputed without the religious element attached to it, right? Right. I mean, it's, it's 
you know, land like any other land when you remove yeah. that from it, you know. So, um, th that's the sort of backstory that allows uh, each side to think the way that they think about their own situation and, and the other side. Well, I'm going to say something here, and it, this, this is something I've been saying for years. And it's because I, years ago I met up with a group of people called the Jewish Socialist Bundes. And these were people during, if you think the uh, Warsaw Ghetto Uprising was caused by Zionists, that's what the Zionists would like you to think, but really the people who it was caused by, the uprising in the Warsaw Ghetto, was the Jewish Socialist Bundes. And they believed after the war they were against creating the state of Israel. And the reason they were against it is they said, look, haven't we learned our lesson? We know what it's like for all of us to be in the same place at the same time where they can get us. Right. What you have to do is create a diaspora in which we spread ourselves out over the entire world so that they can't find one place to kill us all off. <laughs> and uh, they that was part of their, their ideology. And they were hated by the Zionists for that theory because the Zionists believed in a homeland in Israel. But yet, isn't this exactly the reason why they were saying that? Perfect example. You know, yeah. you want to kill Jews? You know where they are. Yeah, yeah it's fair enough. I mean, that's that, that's what... You know, I mean, that's probably the smarter way to go. But again, attach the religious element to it, and it makes the belief it, it, hardcore that they can't do that. Well, you know? I'm part of the so, diaspora, right? You know, I'm not in Israel. I'm part of the diaspora. I've lived a good life. And, uh, yeah, I've had some, some anti-Semitism against me from time to time in my life, but... Well, you know, I, I, I years ago I gave up trying to figure out why they hate us. <laughs> you know, I mean, what is it? Well, I mean, they don't know, like our jokes. What is it? You know, in some ways, for your own inner peace, that's probably the best move because you're never going to really find a, a, a you're not going to find a, an answer to that. Really, in my opinion, that's legitimate, right? It's not as if you're going to wake up one morning and say, oh. You know that's what it is. We we do this whole thing, and and it, I mean, right? There is no legitimate. Well, I tried to figure out why people hate Jews, and then I got these landlords. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you <know>. Right. <laughs> so I mean, no to try no. and get somebody to have the same problems I'm having with his landlord and not being Jewish, and then they're going to say, "Oh, it's goddamn Jews." You know, that's why I always hate it when any Jew doesn't deal in a respectful way towards other people because it then reflects on me yeah. and makes me look bad, makes my entire heritage look bad, yeah. you know? Uh, so uh, I, there, was a, there was a joke, who was Slayton, my friend Bobby Slayton said about another friend of mine that I had at one time, time uh, David Feldman, he said if Hitler had met Feldman, he would have stopped there and been satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's no legitimate reason for it, so it's not going to stop, you know. So, I mean, what you did was make the right move, but it, it just, it is tied, you know, a lot to religion, you know. And like I said, I had my fair share of, you know, schooling on that when I was younger, <coughs> you know. Yeah. For your view on things and... So I, you know, was educated that way, and but I didn't, uh, you know, carry on with it in life. It was just some of the stuff that I had to do. But so I'm familiar with a lot of it, and I know how people think. And I've come from an area, and have people in my family that every time something like this boils up, they wring their hands and convince themselves that you know the rapture is Monday morning at eight a.m. and you better get ready. Yeah. You know, they, yeah. they they constantly think that. You know, so. I've been around this for a long time. I mean, it, it, you're right, it, and it's always been confusing. I mean, you could meet the, the nicest, most genuine, you know, Christian people you could ever think of, and then something like this happens, and suddenly they're for, you know, they personally hang everyone, and, you know, I mean, it's just, they turn into vicious killers, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, religion changes people's thinking. Well, it's better. 
<laughs> you know, I've never, I've never be, been able to totally understand anti-Semitism. It's never, I, I've never understood it because, uh, hey, I'm a Jew and there's no reason to hate me. What did I ever do to you? You know, and I didn't ha listen. You know, they go. They, I love this whole thing. Who was it said it? I think it was. I think it was Robert. Cl not, no, it was. Uh, it was uh, uh, Richard Lewis, who said that um, they say that the Jews own Hollywood. He said, if that's the case, why is Brad Pitt a star and I'm not? <laughs> <laughs> you know. So mm -hmm. I mean. Uh, it, it, there are all these myths about Jews, and those are the things I hate the most. You know, you know, oh, the rich Jews. Yeah, well, what rich Jews? I'm not, I'm not a rich Jew. You know, my father wasn't a rich Jew. In fact, we were kind of middle class, poor, poor Jew. Do you have a light you can turn on there, Tony? You look, you're all blue. Oh, sorry. And, yeah. You know what oh, it is? The dogs are oh, sleeping, oh. and then they walk off. <laughs> The dogs are sleeping, so come. we have to be in the um, dark because your dogs are sleeping. They, keep them, they woke up as soon as I heard you talking. Yeah, Hold on, let me yeah, back. yeah. But it, it certainly appears that, you know, maybe as soon as this weekend, they'll begin to make their way into Gaza and start their work. Uh, you know, they, I don't really see anything where they're, any scenario where they're not going oh, to. Oh, no, I, absolutely not. Know, I mean, the, but how They're many more really children and old people and women and uh, old and uh, you know are going to yeah, die I mean, as a result? People, you know, to evacuate, which is obviously you know much easier said. They, than, they said that uh, they that they, they they asked them to evacuate to the south because the the it's not going to take place in the south, which means everybody in Hamas is moving south, you know, <laughs> but uh, but they said that the reason some people aren't moving is. They were chased out of so many areas in their lifetime, well, and they've had to resettle so many times in their lifetime. They're just tired of it. They don't want to do it anymore. And they're going to stand their ground. That's what's happening with some of them. Well, understandable. I mean, I don't know if it's a good idea, and I don't know if it's going to work out for them, but, I mean, I can understand it. You know, yeah. I can understand it as much as I can understand the guy on TV who says, ha -ha, this is the ninth hurricane. They said this about the last eight, the hell with it, right? Well, I, had, I say to people, remember that this is a war against Hamas, which is a terrorist group. There's another yeah. one called Hezbollah. There are two yeah. of them. And if you want to hate them and you want us to go after them, that's who we go after. Yeah. But I really feel sorry for the people of Palestine, for instance. Always have. Well, that's what's making it so messy, right. is yeah. the fact that it's, it's Hamas within the Palestinian people. Yeah, with it, and uh, and and that's what's happening over here is when they had the protest, people are saying, you know, we hate the Jews, we hate the Palestinians, but they're putting those people into buckets with Hamas and the Jews. Well, you know? I think and the that's what's in the, in happening in the streets is that when 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 those people are getting together in the streets, they're saying, oh, you're for Hamas because you're a Palestinian. And, no, and then now no. all that shit's getting mixed up. No, but that's like saying that I'm that I'm necessarily. I know what it's like saying, that but that's what's happening right that now. That I'm necessarily for Israel because I'm a Jew. No, but and that's what's frankly, happening in the streets right now. I have been now. continually critical of the uh, people who are running Israel and of well, the I understand, government. There. I understand, but that's you what's know? happening in the streets right now. But what I'm saying is the I mean, same the with the people are standing on the Israel side are yelling over there, go, you're for Hamas because you're Palestinian. No, no, they're for Palestinians. I understand that, but. Yeah. They don't get that. And Palestinians the have yelling at each other. Palestinians that have had a rough shrift for years. Yeah, you, you and know. I are sitting here saying that here, but when they're out in the street, that's what's happening out there. Yeah, but well, because they don't understand totally what's happening. Correct. Correct. You know, I'm a Jew. They're therefore, saying if I'm they're a Palestinian. Therefore, Hamas. They're, therefore, they are terrorists. No, it, it, then, the people you, know. you shouldn't like are the people that say support Hamas. Those are the people right. you can get mad I, I, at. I, I get but those that. Those that say support Palestine, no, you should it's Just like everything else, people don't well, read the, what, the right what, stuff and they get the wrong information. And What hmm. complicates it as well is, among Christians, for example, there is often division between, you know, mm -hmm. the Pentecostal, uh, very deep people who yeah, yeah. I might know who would roll their eyes at a, 
Methodist or something along those lines. The Catholics and, and everything else. That's sort of dismissing them, but then you also have some serious discontent within the Christian community, such as Catholics and Protestants and, and that kind of thing. But as you know, what I'm about to say, though, is the problem is there's just as much of that division within the Muslim religion as well. Mm -hmm. So not only yeah. are you speaking of the religion, but there is so much discontent within the own two religions in themselves that even their own groups can't always get along or agree, right? You know, I mean, right. that was the thing about the the very start of the, you know, the invasion of Afghanistan was we found some anti-Taliban people, uh, you know, uh, militia leaders who would help us eradicate the Taliban. But, you know, like they warned our, uh, we, you know, but when we went in, the, the thing was, listen, these guys can't stand each other, but they hate the Taliban. Yeah. But, you know, I, there's this joke from that movie 12 Strong where the guy says, but if they're fighting the Taliban and they happen to see each other, it's very possible they'll stop fighting the Taliban and fight each other. I mean, because it's just, they just, you know, I mean. It's always been that kind of a mess over there, too. Right. I mean, these are people that lived in the same country with the same overall religion. I, I mean, it's, it's, so that's the thing about within Gaza. Well, what's, I'll tell you what, you know, you know, you know it's strange. The... Jews in the area, or the Israel, Israel, Israelis, I don't like to call them, yeah. I don't like to say they're fighting the Jews, because right. there are people that live in Israel who are Israelis who are not, you know, are not Jewish. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, uh, is that uh, they, um, now I forgot what I was going to say, I was going somewhere and then I <laughs> suddenly go off on a tangent and then I can't remember what I was saying. Oh, well. It'll come back. You know. <clears throat> yes, Jeff. Well, I, I get a lot of <clears throat> a lot of calls from people. Uh, Hello, Jeff? You're I, frozen. I, I, you froze. People for 50, 60 years, all of a sudden. F uh, uh, Jeff, you're frozen. I don't know. Are you, are you at home? Teenager. Gorgeous. Looking teenage girl, and uh, no, no, I'm in uh, Motel uh, Six. I'm in Massachusetts. Oh, so you you got some you got a bad connection. Yeah. All right, if you can't no. hear me, no, it just keeps cutting out. We don't get a whole sentence from you, <clears throat> no, but we do get every cough. That's yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. anyway. I'm getting these terrible calls from people about kids who are potentially getting killed. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody is like, you, you, you've got to stop it. Yeah, yeah. But, but there's nothing to do. I, I mean, you, we're all sending them money. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, I, 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 I understand their fear to a certain extent. But that what's happening there is not going to extend over here, although there may be some people here who are anti-Semitic who may take this as some kind of a, a go-ahead to go and you know, shoot, up, shoot up a synagogue. I'm not going to a synagogue anytime soon, okay? You know. Yeah, yeah I have a couple of friends that are fire and uh, fire department. And I don't know, Alan, does, I don't know if you were like, police when any terrorism stuff happened but i know that there are some fire and police that have been not told to you know just told to be on the alert for anything since all this hamas stuff started yeah, absolutely i'm getting it through different channels i'm uh my own i'm on yeah um turn your mic uh, down a little bit would you can you turn, turn my volume down yeah. yeah that'll take a minute sorry okay. yeah they've been they've been told to be on a little bit of alert just because they don't, you know, they're... Oh, wow, it's really... Well, up. the thing we have to worry about here are, are, are uh, second-rate actors. I mean, the people who see mm -hmm. this as an opportunity to then vent their hatred for the Jews here. Where that, again, where that hatred comes from, I have no idea, you know? I don't know what we have ever done to people. To, it, it, the Holocaust was based upon killing Jews, gypsies... Uh, and I think some other religions too. I think Catholics were kind of included in that. Yes, uh, Alan. Yeah. So we did, did finish here. I'm, 
I, I wasn't prepared. Uh, um, yeah, we're getting um, uh, warnings uh, because we're protecting synagogues and stuff from uh, federal agencies and stuff like that. That uh, Hamas Hamas said three days of killing Jews in the United States would be good. It came out today, mm -hmm. and so we don't know if that's three days this weekend or if it's going to be next weekend or when. But so yeah. Well, everybody. that's where Hamas is is screwed is that the jews in america are not israelis you know isn't your fight with the israelis some no, I, you no, see no, i don't no. think they're, they're, I, I don't think hamas knows they're who calling they're on a terrorist act on yeah. synagogues in the united states yeah. that's that's the, the information we're getting yeah so yeah we're we're on guard so to speak mm. It's sad. When I was a, actually when I was a cop, I don't know if we ever had a terrorist act. Mm. You know, I'm sure we did, but you know, it goes back a few. Well, years. it depends on what you call a terrorist act. A lot of times, um, um, just the thing, just going after a synagogue is a terrorist act. Mm. You know, um, I mean, I was, I was, I was on duty when 9/11 hit, so that's definitely a terrorist attack. Yeah, well, of yeah. course, what you know. Again, that was another statement they made. This is our 9-11. Well, 9-11 was, you know, 3,000 people. I yeah, 9-11 was don't a Don't diminish our 9-11, okay? You don't, you let us have something. Let, yeah, there let are, us have something. There are a lot I'm sorry, I can't get back there. Yeah, it's we it's are, so it, it's sort of equivalent. Mm -hmm. yeah. we were, they were attacked without provocation. And so were we. Well, I think that we should we should deal with this as it is, and that is as a terrorist act that was terrible, and that would be terrible under any conditions. And Absolutely. we can't we don't compare it to things. It just is what it is, which is horrific. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, uh, yes, as you were going to say, Tony. Can I, I was going to ask you this, Alex, too. Yeah. Hey. The people down there, Hamas, that whole terrorist organization, they never like anybody. Are they ever going to change? <laughs> Would you shut up? I mean, they just hate everybody. Well, you know, I, I honestly believe, okay, this is the way I, I look at those kind of organizations, and correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, or anybody disagrees with me, is that they will go and do what they do if they don't have a cause anymore. Let's say Israel and Palestine and everybody were getting along just fine. They'd find something else to do, okay? Some other kind of terrorism. Because they're basically terrorists and that's what they live for. It's not the Jews, it's not whatever. It's they're, they're just, they're Hamas and they're, oh, they're I mean, let's see, really, that's see, I believe, uh, it is, no. it, I believe that's the Palestinian word for assholes. Sure. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, Josh. Yeah. Leaders who have power like that, you know, typically don't want to give it up. I mean, there are certainly people who don't want to fix problems because it would mean the end of their necessary existence. I mean, they're basically a well-armed, radicalized, you know, uh, Ron DeSantis, for example. They just moved from grievance issue to grievance issue, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, there's you're never going to hear Hamas say, uh, hey, uh, this is all over now because the problem's been solved. Right, you know, right. Like I said, you know, politicians are the same way. I mean, that's what I'm saying. You're never going to see Ron DeSantis say, oh, we solved it, we own the libs. Ham we let's, say, let's say Hamas, just for argument's sake, scared every, every Jew out of Israel. Let's just say that, okay? Hamas would find somebody else to go after. Right, or, yeah, they'd, yeah I mean, I'd, I would agree. They would still have some sort what? of, you know. Murdering terrorists or murdering terrorists. Hamas is backed, Hamas is backed money-wise and trained by Iran. We know. Uh, that. We we think so. We don't yeah. know so. I mean, the trouble is, we don't we no, don't know let, if let me Iran say was behind this attack. Yeah, but we do know that they that they're training them and supporting. What them. we do, what the problem is, we tend to drag. When this happens, we tend to then drag all our enemies into yeah. it. Okay, rather than show conclusive proof that this is true. I don't think they know if 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 Iran was behind this. No, attack. no, they they they're saying that Iran funded it. That they've been funding Hamas for years, which I think right. is true. 
and it training the way. terrorists for years. Well, uh, who knows what part of that scenario is true? We don't know. Okay, uh, but they have been supplying them with money for years, and I believe they have been supplying them with weapons. Yes, Tony. You know, I was going to ask Alex too. I was talk, I asked this before. I once I heard you talking about it the other night. Has a kid ever remember? What was it? Was it nineteen eighty when we <laughs> took, when we took him into Sheik for, for for health aid? And that's when they really started hating us over here. What? Where we took over what? Did we bring the Sheik in for some like health conditions or something like that? It was like eighty. That was 80 a Shah of Iran. Oh, the Shah. Okay. Well, the Sheik. The Shah, the Shah of Iran was, what was for, that forced thing? out of power, and well, as well he should have been. He was a he was you you know he was robbing the country blind. He was just not a good guy, all right? But the United States looked at him as a friend, okay? And we sided with him. So finally, when he was kicked out, needless to say, Iran wasn't going to like us. They hated us worse because then when he got cancer, we took him in yep. and, and, uh, and, and took care of him medically. And that was love how Tony asked a question. Yeah, and then he, then I, he asked a question and then he disappeared. He went to find the ball gag for his girl. <laughs> he keeps barking. But anyway, that's what happened with the with the Shah of Iran. I mean, what else could we do? The guy who came over here said, "I need help. I am sick. I'm dying. I need your medical prowess," and we gave it to him. We would do that to anybody, you know. So, Did but they you hated gag your uh, they, your girlfriend, Tony. You didn't hear my answer, did you, Tony? What happened to your lights? Are you having light, trouble paying muted. your light bill? Are you having... Oh, that, that looks scary, like Halloween scary. Now, now we can't hear you. you. Don't say, you're muted, now Tony. Now you're muted, Tony. Oh, sorry, Alex. Yeah, I heard a little bit because the, the little one won't fall asleep. But I heard you say about how we took them in. They didn't like you and stuff like that. Wait a minute, hold on they a second. Kinda, I'll handle it. Is that the dog there? That's one of them, and here's the one that's keeping us off pebbles. Okay, okay, hold on a second. Pebbles. Sit. <laughs> Sit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got tenants upstairs now. Then I go bed. Come on, everybody. You're not eat. I gotta give her an app. Now hold on. Let me mute you before she. <laughs> Why don't you give her like a Xanax or something? <laughs> I should actually. Come on. Let, go on. Uh, let him go outside. Don't come back later. <laughs> I should have never said sit. Oh, yeah, man. Tony thought you meant him. Yeah. Anyway, so I mean, you know, this is this is a very comp. I mentioned this last night. This is a it complicated is situation. It goes back till to 1948. Yep. The question is whether that was the right decision to make. I agree with the Jewish Socialist Bundes, who at the time were talking about everybody going into the diaspora, because they knew what it was like to be in one place where where they could find you. And uh, by, by moving out into a diaspora, at least the, the survival of Jews from then on in, out would be pretty much assured. But a homeland in Israel, yeah. surrounded by enemies, I might add, is not what I call yeah. a smart idea. And there was a guy by the name it's of Balfour. a Bal guaranteed place to get killed. Yeah, well, there was a guy by the name of Balfour who was not a Jew. He was actually a, uh, a, a columnist or a newspaper writer. Yeah. And he Maybe. started talking about the Jewish homeland. And then he went to Israel and started stirring up all kinds of crap about the Jewish homeland and where the Arabs and the Jews had always gotten along beautifully. In fact, the Jews who lived in Palestine, which the whole place was called Palestine at the time, uh, got along perfectly and the Jews were considered a form of Palestinian. They were Jewish Palestinians and they all lived wonderfully together. And then here comes Balfour and he stirs up crap and now all the Palestinians hate the Jews. And that's the kind of quagmire that the Jews then moved from Europe after the war to get themselves into the middle of. It was a terrible idea. Just yeah, a in, terrible in, in, idea. In Palestine, <laughs> They teach the kids to hate the Jews, too, in schools. I, I, do they hate, tell them to hate the Jews, or do they teach them to hate the, Pal the uh, Israelis? Uh, maybe Israelis, maybe that's Yeah, it. I mean, I don't know. See, I mean, I have no idea how, mm -hmm. they, how they teach them or uh, what, what the prejudice is there. 
but I know that the logical prejudice would be against Israelis and not against Jews. Per I, se. I wish we would teach the uh, kids in school uh, not to vote for Trump. What does that have to do with what we're discussing? Uh, well, because uh, they're, 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 they're hating the Israelis. Uh, why not hate Trump? Never mind. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty much. I, I didn't get it. Can we talk about the mess with the Republicans right now? Oh, 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 well. That's, that's, we have Josh here. So. Thank you, Brian. That's, uh, that, that's the, the most ridiculous thing ever. I mean, these guys decide they don't want to have the Speaker of the House, and they get rid of him, and now they can't figure out one to have. You know, and, and it, it looks like now uh, they did, uh, what the, what's his name is the new choice? The guy who was once their choice. And uh, they don't think they can get him in. So what happens? We don't have any Speaker of the House, period, to get anything done? I well, mean... It, hopefully it ain't Jordan. That's a piece of shit there. Yeah, well, that's who they're trying to get Jim in Jim Jordan, now. that's the guy they're trying hey, to get hey, in. Josh, it won't the, happen. It hey, won't Josh, happen. Does the President of the United States have any power to no. help Israel no. without Congress? Oh, no. No. Because he's got to go. He's got to go to Congress to get the money. Then he gets it approved by Senate, and then it's, you know, they sent to his desk. Power, but a little power. I mean, in a time like this where they don't have a Speaker of the House and they're totally dysfunctional, can't he do something to keep the country going and to make payment, make payments to things like that, and so on? Well, it, it, he doesn't have too much power. That I mean, they have some, you know, under federal laws and things that give authority to certain areas you know like the military i mean they can move some funds around internally and maybe a little less from this a little more of that he certainly has the right to send the military as it's currently funded anywhere he wants i mean uh he doesn't need congressional approval mean. to launch a uh, an aircraft off the uss gerald ford and drop bombs on gaza tomorrow if he wants you know, I mean, the military. And he has moved them over there, too. So yeah. that's Well, that right. he can do, but he can't, right. he can't uh, apply more new funds to take but care of them. Right. Or by uh, financially or by giving them physical assistance with weapons, um, I mean, he'll have a little for a little while because of what already existed. You know, I mean, the government isn't out of appropriated funds yet, and he can work within what already existed. But at some point, and that's very soon, they'll have to appropriate money. And in order to do that, per the House rules, they'll need a speaker. And if you think so, somebody like Jordan being in there getting anything done ain't going to get, get done. Oh, no, he's not going to get <laughs> anything I mean, done. Nobody else. There's no he's question there, about it. He's their choice if you yeah it's but, probably not going to happen you know my understanding from what i read about him being their choice was that uh, i mean over a third of the members of their caucus voted against him though i mean right choice by that's what i don't understand something like around 140 for him and like 80 against him or something along those lines. i mean yeah that's what's funny is it is already they already had him as a choice and they right. booted him and then they had put in uh uh scalise and he got booted and now they're putting him in again and he's half booted already yeah so, so what the hell it's a shit show yeah, they, so they and don't isn't, really isn't there some guy to, like down in South they, Carolina they, that they've also made a possible choice? I believe so. Yeah. Who was who a nobody? I never heard of him. Well, the guy with the gavel now is the one that they're trying to push in, I think. Uh, what's his name? Mc, so. McKnight or whatever his yeah, name is. Yeah, really, he can break that gavel. Have you seen oh, that? Oh, did the, you see that when he, <laughs> when he said we're adjourned and he so, slapped it down? In a way, their best move overall for both sides and for the country and listen they forced themselves into having this this vote of no confidence mm -hmm. so then they need to do what places do when they have these votes of no confidence in order to move on they find right. a coalition government oh. and, and and what they need to do you know is what we talked about last week which was the democratic offer is still on the table that says mm -hmm. if you will go find a speaker who is not a nut job who was not going to go on television every day <laughs> and talk about Hunter Biden or Sleepy Joe or all the <laughs> speaker who was interested in governing 
and we can make an agreement and we can tell the public about this agreement so that they know if you're breaking it mm -hmm. we will provide you the democratic votes to make it happen but well you can see that's that worked happens. out pretty well already I wish we had a Republican yeah. on this panel who I could sit here and ask, how do you feel about the way your party is I, acting right now? I can right call now. Phil. He's at home. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it, you know, in, in a way, or, you know, really, to me, I would think that they would want to jump at this opportunity yeah. because it would be the, the perfect way for them to discard these clowns Mm -hmm. It would give them the power to probably remove them from committees. They mm -hmm. could go on TV and say, listen, look here, we are interested in governing for the first time and, and forever. As bad as everyone says it is now, for the first time and forever, Democrats and Republicans voted to choose a Speaker of the House. It wasn't a party line, everyone for this guy, everyone against that guy vote. Here we are, we are governing, we've passed appropriate, went to the Senate, we're helping Ukraine, we're helping the Israelis. We just passed a budget. The, the government's not going to shut down now. I, I mean, uh, it's all right I think, there. I think, on the table. I, I think the Republicans could find somebody that they all kind of agree is an okay middle of the ground guy. But I'm it's, sure they it's, could the find thing someone. is, these these yeah. assholes who call themselves MAGA people don't want to vote for that kind of guy. Right. The, the exactly. problem is the the number of people that are absolutely unacceptable in the scenario that I just laid out. There's seven, eight, nine of them, and those so far are the the people that they're choosing so far are on that list. So the Democrats are just going to keep sitting there saying it's not our problem. But our offer still stands. At any time you are interested in showing up and acting like legislators, let us know. Mm-hmm. And find someone. I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's all. They, find someone who's interested in getting these things done. Mm -hmm. And every time we get it done, you can go out and you can make your point of view. And you can talk about it. And we'll do the same thing. But we're not going to talk about the IRS is going to hire all these people to come get you. And Hunter Biden this. And like I said, Sleepy Joe that. And, you know, we're, we're, if you're going to do that, we're just going to. Then you guys can keep jacking off behind closed doors together for as long as you'd like. You know, so, yeah. I mean. Yeah, that's that's what they have to do because they have to do something at some point or plunge the country into an area where they'll never recover politically. So uh, the Democrats are fine with both. I mean, you know, from a political perspective, right? I mean, well, we we, get, could, we, we, could, to, uh, we, we don't have to come to work because we're not in session. They look like fucking clowns. I mean, I, I'm, Democrats probably perfectly happy to go on like this forever. Get I mean, paid, we, don't have to work. It's fucking great. I'm not going to bring this up now because this is something that would get us into a whole another two hour discussion, and that is, how does this government need changes in the way it operates in order? For it to be more effective than what's going on right now. I don't now. think the government needs changes. I think the people within the government need changes. My like right my now. Observation what, what's here, going on right now? What's going on right now? My observation here would be for all the people who constantly come on here and say, "Oh, our government's no good. Our founders are stupid. We need a vote of no confidence, like they got in Europe." Really? Because that's what you have right now. You just had a vote of no confidence in the House of Representatives. So how's that fuck working out for you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. we managed to not have one for 250 plus years and everything was fine. And then all of a sudden you changed. The only thing in this equation that changed were the people that were in the jobs. I mean, and they were chosen by the well, people. So um, if, if, if this is truly a problem, which it is, is it not a problem of the voters that we keep voting for these half-assed people they can't responsibly do the job. Yeah, you you took these 15, 20 clowns out and replaced them with just, you know, half clowns and everything would be fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, but if you get certifiably, you know, whack jobs in there that probably need to seek psychological assistance, I mean, this is this is what this is what you get. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Listen, Israel has a government that changes every fifteen or twenty minutes. How's that working out for them? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not. That's why I've never been a fan of that. I mean, if people want that style of government, I'm not saying it's illegitimate. Now, is, it, is that is that a parliamentary? Um... Many parliamentary systems do have, you know, with a prime minister set up and whatnot. Yeah. 
do have ways to remove their leaders uh, at any time, pretty much. And usually when those leaders are changed, it also typically comes with wholesale changes at the leadership level, like cabinet, what we would consider cabinet members, etc. I mean, when they change prime ministers in the UK, for example, it's not much different than here. He gets a new, you know, chancellor of the exchequer, which is their secretary. And you have to every now and then go up and have a vote of confidence, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So you and, and I mean, you know, you saw it with the last guy in the UK, the, the Boris or what, you know, I mean, constant turmoil over there. I mean, they seem to work it out well enough because they're used to it and all that, but I'm not, I'm not a fan of it. I mean, you know, we... We, ha we have our own way that I think is the best of everything that is combined from everything. I mean, Madison... Well, I would like to agree with you on that, but you know, it's not, not proving itself to be true right now. Well, I, I agree, but, but I don't believe that the problem is the process or the system. I believe it's the people. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Because it's functioned perfectly well... For a very long time, I mean, it, 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 it survived everything that can ever be thrown at it. But the one thing that it can never survive is if the people that serve in it are not willing to serve. I mean, if they only serve their own self-interest, that can't, that can't work. But name me another system of government where people serving their own self-interest can work. There isn't one. In my no, opinion, there isn't no, one. No, no. You know, uh, you know. I mean, I well, I know what our what our founding fathers, why they came to the decisions they did about the way this government works, and I think it was correct. But maybe at the time, you know, they didn't they didn't uh, take into account that anybody would be as Machiavellian, say, as a Donald Trump as president, and they made no no kind of provision for that kind of person. Mm -hmm. I mean, they did some, but I, 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 but I don't think that we, I don't think that we use them, and the and even when we do, we turn it into a, a partisan service. Well, I mean, but, we do have the ability to impeach and then right. to find guilty and throw the person out of office, but that's not going to happen here, no. because the party no. is going to protect its own, and that's it. Rather than say, "Hey, you know something? This guy is a shit show," <laughs> you mm -hmm. know. And we agree with you. Yeah, let's get rid of them. You know, yeah. but I hope you'll you'll vote for another Republican. Okay, yeah. you know. But the people have got to make that decision. You know, I mean, they've got to just decide that this handful of people. You know, well, people got to not reelect the Jim Jordans and the Matt Gateses of the world. If you ask me. Well, you shouldn't even let them into the into the Congress and. Uh, right. You know. And listen, you know, the, the Bob Menendez on the other side or what? I mean, these people got to go. And look at, not, look at what's Democrat his name. Democrat Republican for me. Look at what's his name who's spending all his uh, donate, donations from yeah, with credit right. cards. I mean, there's another that, person that, you know. Yeah. You know. I mean, you know. But I think he should be Speaker of the House. He might be. <laughs> yeah. He might be. Yeah, Before it's all said and done, he might be the only one left. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, yeah. And they just can't figure yeah. it out. It's just. It's... Why don't Why don't they put Trump in there? He's volunteered to do it. Yeah. Well, we got we got our theme song running, uh, and uh, it's uh, the end of another wonderful, good discussion tonight. Mm. This is really terrific. I didn't even I didn't even go to the lockout thing. It was better method for me to just bring people in by showing my picture for a short time while I let them in. And then uh, when we knew we were fine, because you know what Kevin Stopper did last night? He uh, he showed porn. Bad Kevin. Bad Final Kevin. Came, came out of but then the good Kevin called. Yeah. So anyway, uh, thank Kevin. you, thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. Thank you, uh, uh, <laughs> thank you, Josh. Thank you to Brian Neary. Good to have you here. You've been a little quiet tonight, but that's. Oh, I'm just listening. Yeah. A lot of good yeah, good. And uh, thank you to Alan. Thank you very much, uh, 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 Kevin. And oh, also Tony, whenever we saw him there. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, come he, on. Oh, shut up. Oh, jeez. Oh, Take it and move upstairs. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Enough of the dog. 
I'd rather have the porn here instead of that. Anyway, that's it for tonight. I'll uh, say goodbye to all of you, and all of you should, uh, like, wave goodbye back. Okay? There they go, folks. There they go. There, here's my hand. Okay. That's it for tonight. I'll uh, be back here on Monday uh, with the, uh, with the uh, pop-up show. That'll be over there on Facebook. Okay. And uh, in the meantime, Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection. He'll be taking your calls at, on Skype at GabNet Live. I will see you then with this program back here next uh, Wednesday at 1030. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know what to do. Tell her I love her. Good night. Have a nice weekend, everybody.